The highest award given to British officials who work abroad is the Order of St Michael and St George. This consists of a star with a little enamelled painting and the painting shows the angel St Michael standing on the neck of the devil and the devil is a black man. This image is very similar to one that we've become familiar with. A policeman kneeling on George Floyd's neck as he says, I can't breathe. And the idea of standing or kneeling on the neck of a black man is deeply embedded in these notions of dominance, of white people over black people, the dominance of Western nations over other countries. Now, one of the recipients of this award was a man called Sir Evelyn Baring. Sir Evelyn Baring was the grandfather of someone called Mary Wakefield. Mary Wakefield is the wife of Dominic Cummings, Boris Johnson's chief advisor, a man who has done more to cover up the record of current events than anyone else in this government. Sir Evelyn Baring was governor of Kenya when Kenya was a colonial possession of the United Kingdoms. And while he was there in the 1950s, he instituted a system of concentration camps, which even his own attorney general compared to those run by the Nazis. He drove into these concentration camps and fortified villages, almost the entire population of the Kikuyu people, then numbering over a million people. Huge numbers died, some of them of starvation and disease, many beaten to death, burnt to death, tortured to death. Repeatedly, men were castrated. In some camps, almost the entire population of children died. And until the Mau Mau are destroyed, the innocent too must suffer. It was Evelyn Baring who oversaw the creation of this system. Sir Evelyn Baring, upon whom rests the main responsibility of the campaign. We are making progress in that struggle, and we are all confident that in the end we will succeed. He also directly authorised the beating to death of people within those camps. When Labour MPs asked inconvenient questions about this, on one particular occasion when 11 men were beaten to death, he told the Colonial Secretary to tell the MPs that they had died from drinking contaminated water. Before Britain left Kenya, there was an order sent down, implemented by Special Branch, to conduct what they called a thorough purge of the archives. They burnt crate after crate of documents. One of the orders instructed that if there were too many documents to burn, they should be packed into weighted crates, taken as far from the coast as practicable, and dumped into very deep water without currents. They erased not only the evidence of what happened in Kenya, but much of what happened in Malaya. The British troops in Malaya slowly but steadily are smashing the Reds' reign of terror, and they'll keep at it till the job's done. In Yemen, where Britain fought its dirty war, in Aden. We're going to be extremely firm and uh, extremely mean. If anyone starts any trouble, they'll just get their head blown off. Uh, they'll get the message in time, you know. We remember all this in the context of Boris Johnson telling us that to pull down statues is to lie about our history. The entire history that we are told about British imperialism is a lie. We, as a nation, have a greater level of pride in our empire than any other European nation. People look back with nostalgia to Britain's imperial past. That's impossible to understand unless we understand the massive fabric of lies, of deletions, which has airbrushed the colonial atrocities practised everywhere we went. Imperialism has long been justified through the notion that the white man had a duty to civilise the so-called other races. Racism is an ideology, and to a very large extent it was created by British theorists. You can take it back to the late 18th century and the work of a physician called Charles White, who was one of the people who formalised this idea that there's a sort of ladder of life, and the white man is at the top of that ladder, and below the white man on the ladder is a white woman. And below that were people with dark skin. That ideology remains with us today. It's that ideology which led to the policeman kneeling on the neck of George Floyd. Institutional racism to systemic racism. And a huge part of that ideology began here in the United Kingdom to justify our 
seizure of other people's resources and other people's lives. These relationships continue by other means. Through our trade relationships today, which are often highly coercive, enforced by offshore tribunals of corporate lawyers, basically forcing countries to give up their natural resources, enforced by international debt, and what we see is a net drain of wealth from the poor nations into the rich nations. This wealth is not just being taken from other people in the world today, it's also being taken from future generations. The capacity of the earth to support us is being wrecked by those who are burning through the earth's resources as quickly as possible, who are destroying our life support systems. Environmental destruction, imperialism, racism, these are intimately connected. They all mesh together as part of a global system of injustice. It's not just the bad stuff in history that they don't want us to see. It's also the good stuff, the massive role of the slave revolts and rebellions, of the slaves themselves and the ex-slaves, who through their advocacy managed to generate a huge amount of outrage about the slave trade and what it involved. Similarly, the history of resistance and rebellion within these shores, a huge range of people's movements amongst the working classes, amongst the middle classes, trying to create a better, juster, more democratic nation, often hundreds of years before their visions came to fruition. And by learning from that history, as well as by learning from our history of atrocities, these two hidden histories, we can begin to understand where we stand, why we are where we are, and how from that position we can start to build a better world. Double Down News brings the big issues together. It shows how they fit into the wider story the story of where we are and how we got here, and the story of how we need to change, how we need to build a better world. So please support Double Down News through Patreon and allow this journalism to flourish.